Now what we're going to look at is updating and deleting records from a database. So we already know that we've got two records here in our database table, but what we're going to do is we're going to update them based on certain conditions. So we're going to look at a couple of SQL queries that let us update or manipulate our database data in certain ways. So for example, we could update the created uh, date to the current time, or we could update um, the last name to something else where the first name equals something, or we could do even do it by unique ID. So we could say update, um, you know, the person at record two, for example, that that's their unique identifier. So let's um, go ahead and look at how we will actually would actually perform an update query. Now, this is exactly the same as performing an any other query. So we're going to use the if statement that we looked at in the last part to actually perform a query within here and then assign it to a variable. So that's our query. We want to assign it to um, an actual update uh, variable. Uh, this doesn't really matter what it's called at this point, um, but we now want to actually write our SQL, our structured query. So I'm going to say update, so that's the update um, keyword, and I'm going to choose the table that I want to update. So this is going to be people. So what we can do is we can update everything. We don't need to define a where clause. Um, so we could say update people set. So this is going to set a particular field to a particular value. So I'm going to set created equal to now. Remember, we looked at the now function when we we're actually building our database table. So what this is going to do is it's going to perform an update query while checking if, if, if it was success, a success or not. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check how many results were actually, how many rows were actually updated. We won't do that just now, uh, but we'll look at that in just a moment. So if we go to our uh, browser and actually run this refresh, looks like everything was okay, but then again, we're not outputting any errors, so we wouldn't know. But let's go over to our database and check. So keep an eye on these times. This time should then update. So if I click browse, you can see that, that time is now updated. Because we've used the now uh, function, the MySQL now function, that's automatically changed this for us. And this, if this was a week from today, it would update the date as well. So now that we've updated that record, well, we've updated all records, we might actually not want to do that. So we can use uh, something called a where clause. So we can say update um, create uh, update people, set created that equals now, where, and I could say something like ID equals one, for example. So now what this is going to do is it's going to only update one record. Now, before we do this, let's just take a look at uh, the affected rows property that we are returned by the MySQL um, object. Now, again, remember from last time we had echo db num, uh, sorry, we had echo uh, result num rows. Now, in this case, you might assume that we can say echo update num rows. In actual fact, we can't. So when we go ahead and refresh, nothing no, nothing appears despite the fact we've just updated two records again. That's because we're not actually returning any data. So there's no rows returned. Uh, we can prove this by just doing a print R. And again, this is a great way of sort of debugging. Uh, we can print R and update and see what it returns to us. It just returns one. Now, why is it return one? You know, what's happened here? Well, let's go ahead and just change this uh, table name and let's check what this uh, value is now. Nothing. So this is a little strange. So instead of doing a print R, let's do a var dump. And what this will do is it will return the variable type and the value to us. So now let's go ahead and refresh. Ah, we now see that in, uh, one actually meant true. So rather than it being a one value that was returned, it actually means true. Now let's go ahead and change this to peoples and see what happens. Nothing. So it returns true when it's a success. So we already know this now that we can actually, you know, now we've done it, but we know that it doesn't return num rows or anything like that. What actually uh, happens is the DB object, so the, the original database object that we used to create, has a property called affected rows updated. And this means anything that any row that was affected by the last query um, is applied to this to this property. So what we can now do is refresh and we see we get two back. We know that we have two um, rows that were affected. Now, if we were to introduce this where clause, so I'm going to say where ID equals one, what this is going to do is it's going to set created to the now, uh, the, the, the value of the now function, 
only where the ID is equal to one. So when I um, when I go back to my browser here and refresh the page, keep an eye on just the first records created date. When I refresh, we get one returned. That's not the same one as the one we just looked at, the true value. This is actually saying we have updated one record. So now when I refresh, you see that only that value changed. So we can use where clauses to, to update. We can use different operands as well. So we could say where ID is greater than one. And in this case, what's gonna happen is when we refresh, we update one record, but we only update record two because that's great the only record that's greater than one so we can do all sorts of in here we're not going to go too much into sql theory or sql syntax um, but that's essentially how we update that people table and set a particular value so we could say set last name equals now this is string data so we need to uh, put this in single quotation marks so i'm going to set last name to g a r r e with a single t um, in fact, let's just change this all together to Smith, for example. Uh, and I'm going to say where uh, ID equals two. OK, so what this is now going to do is it's going to update the last name for that user at, at, at position two. So when I refresh, one was up, one was affected. And when I refresh now, this last name has changed. So uh, let's go ahead and just edit that back to normal. OK, so now that we know how to update, how do we delete? Well, Deleting works in exactly the same way, except we're not setting any values, we're deleting things. Um, and the affected values property on the database uh, object, the MySQL object, is exactly the same as well. It will tell you how many records were deleted. So in this case, we want to say, uh, in fact, let's remove this query altogether. We want to say delete from people. Now, what this is going to do, this is probably the most dangerous query you could execute if you had a database full of data. This is going to delete everything, everything that you've inserted into your database already. So I'm going to put a where clause on here and I'm just going to say where ID equals, oops, where ID equals one like that. So we're deleting from the people table where the ID equals one. We're going to uh, we're going to say, oh, yeah, get these affected rows back. So when I refresh, one record was affected, which ultimately means one record was deleted and we're only left with one record. So if you want to learn more about uh, actually, you know, how you can structure queries and, and different things that you can do with queries, uh, particularly with things like selecting and updating, then it's a good idea to go ahead and research SQL. Once you understand how to use MySQLi, uh, the MySQLi extension, whatever queries you put in doesn't matter. That's that's related to your application and what you need to retrieve from your application. And, and SQL queries can be as simple or, uh, or as advanced as you like. But um, that's basically how we would update or delete records, how we would check the affected rows, which is obviously, as we've seen, different from the number of rows because we're getting this from the database connection object uh, or the MySQLi object rather than the MySQLi result object.